Hi Jerks, and welcome back to the Beer Jerk Beer of the Week Drink Along. I'm Matt. And I'm Luke. And today we are drinking a beer from Mount Brewing uh, in Mount Wanganui. Uh, Mount Wanganui, oh, Mount Wanganui is on the uh, <laughs> east coast, I think. Of, uh, <laughs> You're still definitely Wanganui. on the east coast, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's on the east coast. Last time we checked. Joe works there. Joe lives up from there, he'll tell us. <laughs> um, Beautiful uh, part of the country. This yeah. Tauranga. Um, and uh, yeah, so what we're drinking is a, a Belgian American pale ale. Yeah, a Belgian. So, so Mount's one of the older uh, craft breweries in New Zealand, uh, and it's a family business uh, which has recently been handed down to the next generation. So there's some really interesting things. Um, there's a really talented uh, young Polish brewer, Pavel, there, who's um, yeah, just as a team, they've got they've got a really sort of forward-looking perspective on things. I think a lot of the beers have been quite traditional in the past. Obviously, they were founded in the 80s, I want to say. Well researched. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, lovely bunch of people. They've got a really cool brew pub called The Rising Tide that's a super busy, popular place. Um, and just steadily putting out uh, some really interesting seasonals in a variety of styles, as well as the core range, of course. Um, and this is a really cool, so this is the maybe second in the Around the World series. Yeah, so they also released uh, Yellowstone, which was uh, an American IPA. Um, but it's great that we've seen the, the quality of the Mount beers really go from strength to strength over the last couple of years. Um, and they're starting to branch out a bit more with something like this. So um, this is, I mean, I don't know how much um, Belgian American Pale Ale is a kind of branding exercise because to me this tastes like a kind of a beefed up uh, Belgian blonde ale. Mm. Um, and it's really those. Um, kind of the hop charge of those uh, American hops thing. It's what Idaho 7, uh, Simcoe and Citra in there, which kind of uh, give that kind of classical APA vibe. But really to me, it's that um, yeast character that really sings out as the, um, the most char characterful and unique element of this beer. Yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, and I have really love what they've done so, uh, with this series, so you can really see clearly what the ingredients are. And for brewers and home brewers and just beer enthusiasts in general, which is really nice to, um, just to learn about what these different flavours are in your beer and just get an idea of hops that you prefer or yeast that you prefer. So yeah, as much as it's, it's Citrus, Simcoe and Idaho 7, so a, a cracking trio of all-American, big, bold, bolshy hops. Um, but this, this beer is not about the hops. No, so um, you, you, even though you've got some nice hop character coming through, like on the nose, yeah, you're going to pick up that um, traditional Belgian yeast character. I'm using an Abbey yeast in there, which kind of um, gives it that kind of peppery, uh, estuary spiciness. Um, but those hops work really well in support. You've got that, those fruity notes that don't really, don't really clash. Mm. Um, I mean, often you will see kind of uh, hopped up Belgian ales um, uh, using that kind of uh, dry, dry hopping, particularly in recent years, mm. um, to, to give them that uh, kind of extra dimension um, rather than your kind of classic tri triples and uh, noble hop saisons and all that kind of stuff that you get. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's. Um, not as non-traditional as it would seem if you're if you're looking at kind of the Belgian brewing culture over the last twenty years, yeah. Um, where um, where hoppy hoppy interpretations of those classic styles uh, are coming more to the fore. Yeah, yeah. And there's been some interesting takes on you know just the, the big brewers and the Abbey brewers and the likes of Chimay. So many of them are doing these hop forward versions of their classic beers uh, with interesting modern French hops and interesting new European hops, uh, which is really cool. Uh, the hops in this, um, as I said, they don't take a back seat, but they're there and they're present. But they, the nice thing is they don't clash up against the yeast and the sort of um, there's nice residual sweetness in this. It's uh, yeah, it's it, it's it's super well balanced, and I find that um, those hops really give character on the middle of the palate and add a lot of brightness to it, um, rather than having kind of a dip in the middle of the palate um, as you, you get your kind of spiciness up front and then that. <coughs> Kind of earthy floral note coming in the back it kind of really fills out the palate on the beer and gives you a, a kind of a really nice um zesty bright perception which is um which is really nice and it ties well into that into that classic belgian blonde ale which is um while it's not the um, in the kind of traditional uh, english and american tradition um does have that kind of uh, a different brightness to it whereas the hops really com really complement it quite nicely so they've done a good job there yeah, for me, um, if I was tasting this blind, I'd probably say it's like a, yeah, like a, like a mini hoppy triple, basically, which which is exactly that. So the Belgian beers, uh, I don't know if we talked about this before on one of the drink alongs, but the uh, you have a, 
you have your, your blonde or Abigail, and then you have a, a double, a triple, and a quadruple, uh, which they, they've got a numbered series because basically each one is boozier than the last, but they're all quite different styles. But actually the, the double and the quad are related and the, uh, the single and the triple are related. So yeah, and, and while this would be more the strength of a double, um, it's brewed in the style, in that kind of uh, blonder style. And yeah, you're right, it does have a little bit of the sweetness that's reminiscent of, a, of the triple. I don't think they've used candy sugar or anything in there, no. as far as I know. Um, but yeah, that, that residual sweetness that you talked about earlier, kind of, yeah, really earns balance to the beer. Um, and it's, yeah, it's a lovely, bright, drinkable pale ale. And it's the, the kind of stuff that I love about uh, styles like table beer, mm. where um, that yeast character, which so often in hoppy beers, um, particularly American styles and uh, modern styles like IPA, the, the, that yeast character takes a back seat and it's there to ferment the beer and get out of the way. Um, whereas that people playing more with yeast character and bringing more flavorful yeasts into the mix um, can really deliver some interesting results. Yeah, so this is, um, this is Abbey yeast, uh, which is, of course, used in a lot of uh, monastic type beers. Um, but it's, with, with all ingredients, I suppose, as we've been talking about over uh, the previous two weeks with uh, harvesting hops early or harvesting hops late in the season, could taste drastically different. Just the way that you manage your ferment with the yeast can give you very different flavor profiles in the beer. Yeah, so um, stuff like temperature is super important. Um, and yeasts like, um, like these Belgian strains um, are often um, allowed a bit more room to play um, with a, a, a classic uh, American yeast strain, uh, like the archetypical one, US05, or Chico as it's known, um, is probably one of the most common yeast strains in the world. And a lot of the time that's brewed at a really set temperature and um, allows very little variation, which uh, allows a really clean uh, fermentation profile. Whereas a lot of the time with uh, Belgian yeasts and stuff like, uh, stuff like this, uh, the yeast is allowed to free rise in temperature so you get a mm. bit more uh, and ferment a little warmer so normally that you'd have your standard ale fermentation at about uh, 18 20 degrees whereas stuff like this can get up to 24 25 sometimes even as high as 26. Um, i mean if you're um, really pushing the, for those um, uh, yeast characters you can you can go even warmer as well um, but yeah the, so having a wider range and allowing that yeast character to come through is um, a key part of making a beer like this. Uh, I'm the mannequin piss. Uh, so I've, I got to see the mannequin piss again about three weeks ago when I was in Brussels, which uh, is a very, very famous statue that's uh, pretty central in the city. Uh, so mannequin piss, as you all know, you, uh, you French speakers, just means uh, small pissing man. Yeah, it's a little boy um, taking a piss as a fountain. Yeah, and that's the boy that's on your on your can of beer, and and he is his life size is about that big, and he's just in this little square, um, and he's he's having a wee, and that statue's been there since the 1400s. Uh, well, that statue hasn't. The one that's there right now, I think, has been there since the 60s because people keep stealing it. So there is an older one in the in the museum in Brussels, but it's definitely not the original one from the 1400s. Um, and yeah, it's 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 the motif. It's the, it's the symbol of Brussels, the city. And I don't know where it came about from originally, but the, there's talk that it was linked to uh, tanneries. So they had all the different guilds in Brussels doing all the different jobs, and you had the, uh, the Guild of Tanners, uh, who of course are leather workers that need a lot of piss to, to tan their leather. So they'd, they'd always have big troughs outside and just encourage lads walking past just to have a wee in the trough because they always needed the, uh, it's the urea, I think, that treats the leather. Yeah, they use a, a bunch of gross stuff in uh, tanning leather. They use um, uh, uh, dried turds as well. When you, oh, do they? When your dog poo's gone really white and crumbly, that they, uh, they really like that. Um, so <laughs> don't, don't ask too many questions about your, where your leather comes from. Sickos, yeah. Um, uh, yeah so, so that's where the name comes from. So yeah, just an homage and an honor to, uh, to the city of Brussels. Yeah, didn't someone try and cancel Mannequin Piss earlier this year? Cancel culture, it's out of control. Uh, so the, the mannequin uh, has about 400 different outfits uh, and there's a little society of people that dress him up. So very regularly you'll go along and it'll be Halloween, you'll have a little different outfit on so you can go and visit a special museum with all his little outfits. I did not make the time to visit the museum. I had more important beer drinking activities to do while I was in Brussels. You're on to visit, what are you, you going to do? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but they... Yeah, I think I read something about there was a um, 
Uh, it was in the Brussels version of Monopoly. So the mannequin piss obviously was quite a key tile in the Monopoly for Brussels. Uh, and Hasbro, whoever owns Monopoly, uh, they made Brussels change it. And I think he's wearing a pair of shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of weird. I think he's like weeing out of the shorts or... Uh, uh, but I, yeah, I love drinking beers like this. There's um, there's real complexity. There's really interesting layers. Um, it's it's not a one-dimensional beer. This is a beer that I've just come back to and drink again and again. Yeah, for sure. Which I can't because it's a seasonal beer. Uh, well, we've, we've still got a little bit left, so um, we can uh, take a couple more cans home. We can get a few more. Yeah. Um, talking of seasons, um, the season for our most exciting box is coming up. We're very excited. Spring. No, the other oh. one. Oh yeah, um, Advent calendars. <laughs> <laughs> um, jingle bells and all that. Yes, um, sorry, I, I know a lot of you watching this, you're like, oh, Christmas, humbug, what are we talking about? It's, it's only September. Um, but, uh, Oops, an Advent calendar, uh, we send it out in late November, and this past couple of weeks, Matt and I have been coordinating with all the breweries and getting the beers lined up. So we're not being super premature because the, the brewers have to brew these beers for your box that you're going to be opening on the 1st of December. Yeah, so um, as always, it's going to be uh, 24 different beers from 24 different breweries and it's going to be a mixture of brand new beers, beers that have been brewed exclusively for the box, uh, one-off imports and it's the most exciting, coolest box that we do every year and it is launching, well, if you're watching this uh, on Thursday uh, for the drink along, it's launching tomorrow morning. So Friday morning in the email, check so, your inbox. So have your clicking fingers ready uh, for the most exciting, coolest product that we do every year. Um, it will sell out again, it sells out every year, so uh, make sure you get in there to secure your box um, if you want to have what we think is the coolest experience in beer in New Zealand every it, year. It is, and um, so I started Beer Jack about seven and a half years ago now, and we've been doing the advent calendar for years. and. Uh, We've had lots of imitators, uh, so lots of people will be doing advent calendars this year, which is, you know, it's always interesting to see. We always, um, we always make notes of the beers that are in the advent calendars, especially the ones that are priced the same as ours. And honestly, none of them even come close to touching what we do. We, you know, it's, it's not a thing we do to make money or anything. It's just a seriously cool thing to work with bunch of our favorite brewers and just just a celebration of the craft of beer yeah and just uh yeah it's like this beer of the week drinking but every day because it's december and it's christmas time yeah so um i think for our jerks it's uh kind of our christmas present to you <laughs> um, except that you have to buy it <laughs> yeah you don't have to buy it sorry it is quite expensive relatively right, well um i would cheers you uh but uh i've run out of that delicious beer so uh we'll have a chat and uh, <laughs> see you next week, Jack. Enjoy. See you next time. Bye.